Hi, welcome back to another Ollie Guns video. This is uh, a review of the Rototilt R3, which is sadly the previous version. There's now the new RC3 uh, out, but I think hardware wise, pretty much identical. Uh, most of the changes now are in the cab with the new joysticks and the new screen that they've got, control screen, which I'll run through shortly. Um, but I thought a lot of people have been asking me since I've had this uh, Kubota and Rototilt set up on demo, um, how I found the Rototilt, because obviously I have an Encon um, and I'm on my second unit now. I have to say, uh, there is no real loyalty for me, particularly to any one brand. Uh, to me, it all comes down to service, um, your backup, and also the package, you know, whether you can get the right product uh, on the right machine. So I don't come at this from a, I love Encon, um, you know, here's a rose tilt, or oh, I don't like the color. Uh, this is the honest review of someone who has used this product now for a couple of weeks. And, um, I was pretty close to buying a rose tilt when I got my second unit. Uh, the R1 is a very comparable unit to my Encon ECO2. And there's a few reasons why I didn't, but I've gone through those in other videos specifically about the weight category that I'm in with that little 2.8 ton digger that I run. So an eight tonner, as we are here, you've got a lot more options. Uh, all of the big manufacturers, all of the small ones, make a unit for one of these. And there's a lot of options that you can go for. This is a full fat setup. We've got the top hitch. We've got the quick change, new quick change system, which is uh, there like hydraulic, the way of changing attachments hydraulically, uh, along with um, like your quick hitch. Uh, got a gripper and multiple attachments as well that I've been playing with since I've had this uh, on demo for the last couple of weeks. So a, a real full fat setup, um, all running through the control system. This is with rotor tilts control system. Uh, so we're on single lines here, even though the machine actually does have two, we only need the one and it splits it all proportionally down in the tilt rotator. So this is the full fat setup, the way of doing this. There is another video I've done on a different ways to set your tilt rotator up um, with different machines or maybe the type of work that you do. But for this review, that's what we've got. So that's where I'm coming from with this one. Um, I have found this a pretty easy unit to live with, really. There's a few differences with the rotor tilt sort of come at this from slightly different angles to the Encon steel wrist equivalents. Uh, they have an oil filled uh, gearbox in here. So the, the rotator is all oil filled rather than grease. Um, that allows them then they weren't using a hammer on this unit. So you can use a hammer underneath the tilt rotator uh, for they reckon 250 hours a year. And again, there's no way of recording that. So you could abuse your warranty if you were that way inclined, but, but also it sort of proves that they're kind of confident in this setup. None of the other manufacturers will rate their, uh, their tail rotator for a hammer. So uh, that could be quite important depending on the type of setup that you do and the type of work you do. And for me, particularly at my end of the market, I could therefore probably direct mount my unit rather than my current top hitch setup, because of course, um, I, I use a hammer a bit, but not a lot. Definitely nowhere near 250 hours in five years, probably not on one year. Um, so I could stay well underneath that, that cap with Rototil. So it gives you options, depending on what your sort of scenario is and what your work is. Um, anyway, that's one main sort of key thing. Um, there's a few stickers and things on the side here. Uh, which kind of explain it's got the secure lock system which relates to the quick hitch um, it's got ICS which is the control system that it runs uh, in, back in the cab and I'll show you that shortly um, ILS I can't remember what that one stood for now and then LHV I mean there's there's, there's names on stuff all over this um, but essentially it's the full fat setup um, we've got the gripper here um, they don't rate this as sort of quickly detachable uh, some people, uh, some manufacturers now have got these sort of quick detached grippers. Um, this one is sort of piped in, but you can take it off with a few bolts. So it's not like it's not detachable. Um, you know, it's not fixed essentially. It's just a little bit more work to take it off, but I haven't really found it to be too much of a problem. I guess it might be, and this is a, a thing with all tilt rotators, is the width 
when your narrow trenching is always an issue but when you've got a top hitch you can just drop the entire tilt rotator off and of course that's very easy to do with the quick change oil system because you don't even need to get out and disconnect any of these hydraulic lines it does it all through the quick hitch very very nice um, other things to mention really there are a couple of grease ports on here just because it's got an oil filled uh, rotator assembly um, most greasing is done through this one here and it splits it um, to different parts of the tilt rotator as it goes. Something that I was told when I went around the Encom factory is that they have a little valve in here that splits the amount of grease that you pump in. Um, so when you pump in X amount, in fact it says I think 9 grams a day on this little tag here, um, you know, you've got to work out how many pumps 9 grams is, but it splits that proportionally then to different parts of the, the unit depending on which bits need more or less grease. Road to Tilts 1 doesn't do that sadly and oh, it's a small thing isn't it but um, these are I'm trying to find differences here you know between systems because that's where we're really looking they're all very good um, that's really where we're at uh, but if we're going to review the Road to Tilt these are the small little differences between them all. Um, this unit here comes in at 357 kilos. That's just for the tilt rotator. It doesn't include the bucket, it doesn't include the top hitch. To be honest, it's pretty competitive really with the other systems, uh, main manufacturer's systems on the, on the market. Um, haven't really found that to be uh, any lighter or, or heavier than, than either of them. Um, but of course, again, depending on your setup and how you want to run it, you could therefore maybe run no top hitch, which would save you uh, 96 kilos up here. These are all small things, but trust me, it all adds up. This road to tilt bucket is a genuine road to tilt bucket. I've loved the long profile of it and, and the shape. It's, it's a really nice bucket and it's got um, wear strips underneath, but it does weigh quite a bit. And I talk a little bit about setups in my other videos with this machine, but with the long stick and, and the, 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 the Kubota itself, the way that is, the rubber tracks and things, it does make this unit quite heavy. And this R3 is rated from, I think, seven ton up to 11 ton. Now, if you put this on a seven ton machine, you're gonna really know about it. And to be fair, this eight and a half ton machine knows about it, certainly. It handles it, but with the way it's set up currently, it is compromised a bit. Um, it could probably help if you, again, if you were to change the way it's set up, maybe go direct mount. I'd say probably a slightly smaller bucket would help it, maybe no gripper. A gripper's a lovely thing to have, mind you. It's, it's always, horses for courses, isn't it? Depends on the sort of work. Really, more base machine weight is key. If you had this thing under a, a 10, 11 ton machine, which really aren't any bigger than this now, the way manufacturers are designing these sort of heavier eight tonners, this unit's gonna be uh, a lovely thing. Um, under your uh, yeah under your machine so th these are sort of my sort of early thoughts uh, you have got a couple more grease points one is right down inside here which is a bit of a pain to get to actually uh, greasing down in here that's a bit awkward and I'd like to have seen you know could we have got something out and a bit more remote so it's a, a bit more obvious and secondly um, you know a little bit easier to get to in the morning because uh, it does require a bit of greasing um, and obviously we've got one down here which uh, isn't a bad position but as you can see it's very easy to get um, you know mud and stuff caught up in the uh, in the front of it so uh, small things maybe you know if it was off to the side here maybe it wouldn't catch the mud so much but I'm really picking nitpicking on details um, the oil in the gearbox you do obviously have to change um, but it, I mean, it's a, a lot, a lot of hours. Um, they, I don't think uh, it would really be an issue. I think it says there a thousand, uh, yeah, a thousand hours. I think it's a long time. You just, uh, you're not going to have a problem, or they may even change it every 500 for you. But I think you'll be, you'll be doing bushes. These are not grease. These elements don't need to grease that bit down here. You'd probably be doing bushes here. That's where my tilt rotator tends to wear more in this bush here here is good it doesn't seem to bother that too much but these little they're just smaller aren't they so um yeah but it takes again a lot of hours three four thousand hours before i tend to uh, start seeing a little bit of play in those um obviously this unit's on about 200 so it's not uh, not an issue um you do have little indicators here to see if your bucket is latched these move forward and go back and sit flush um or, or at a position um when they're locked in and secure so that's nice to see um gives you just a bit of a visual indicator you do also get your indicator in the cab of 
course, so which I'll run through again in a minute. Um, so yeah, lots to lots to like about this system really, and I think it's helped massively by this install. There's some lovely, really neat, very simple pipe work here, um, which goes down in through the top pitch. Uh, this does also run the standard quick hitch line, so a um, bit of a kind of hybrid solution this. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a lovely, uh, lovely little set up that I think these these blocks on the side here um, you know hoses the, the the hose and the electrics really really neat and it, it's very tidy install back up and over the arm and that can make a huge difference really with these these setups um, you know it, somebody can do the best you can buy the nicer setup you want but if it's installed badly you, you'll hate it and I've seen hoses before on these machines sticking out behind this dog link and, and all sorts of just nasty horrible things I just think what is going on there it's a it's an injustice really to the person who's spent their hard-earned cash on on these things so fair play to Rose Tilt they've done a nice install on this one I mean you'd always hope that of course it is the demo machine but uh, oh well it's the demo machine then they sent it to me so they definitely knew I was going to comment something on it um, there is a bit of excess wiring up here you know I'm a stickler for that that is actually for if you had a um, like tilt or a rotation sensing and all of that they can feed that back up through the through the arm thing so this uh, doesn't have it has a like a, a basic tilt sensor in it but it's certainly not good enough for plumbing back into like a, a GPS system um, it's it's not it's not accurate enough and rotor tilt deliberately have decided to stay away from um, doing any of that kind of thing so there's plenty of, of, of space to fit uh, whichever manufacturer of uh, GPS you go for or whatever um, up in here to get a tilt or rotation sensor in there um, sorry tilt sensor the rotation I think rotor tilt do actually give you but um, yeah they just don't do, they just don't do tilt which some manufacturers do but again then you get a conflict of interest possibly with whose whose problem is it when the the screen starts going wrong or whatever uh, people blame each other so I kind of understand why rotor tilt stayed out of that they've said that's not really our bag um, you know fit your aftermarket one to it and there's plenty of space for that so yeah that's understandable uh, last thing to note really with your quick change and I'll I'll maybe take the tilt rotator off and just explain um, what the uh, what all the valves look like and, and the quick change system they've got because it's there's some quite nice features on that so we just dropped the tilt rotator off there which literally takes as long as it does to take your bucket off it's a really really quick system um, and we can now have a look in a bit more detail about how rotor tilt's quick change system works so you've essentially got a, a hydraulic block in here and it's got little uh, covers that automatically uh, open and, and come down and seal against your um, hydraulic flat face couplings that are in here and then that's what connects it all up so you can see the kind of the male end of it here it's obviously the female end these are the pins that that get pulled back and this whole system comes back and then pushes down um, and these pins lock in with the back pins uh, on either your bucket or top of your tilt rotator um, the other clever bit here is these are the this is the electric um, connection which is kind of poked up in here this little rubber boot comes down and keeps these rubber these electrical connections clean um, and the same you know that obviously is what connects into there so that's how it connects electrically um, you can run you've got lots of spare ports on here you can run a case drain if you wanted to um, you can have more hydraulic flow there's all sorts of options um, that Rotor Tilt talk through with how you can have these set up so um, yeah op options are plentiful as usual I can't remember all of the specs right now but um, when you're looking through the brochure these are certainly things that you need to be be looking at and considering because different manufacturers can get different amounts of oil flows through their tilt rotator um, so some options you might be able to run let's say a flail underneath some maybe they would need a case drain that's external that would then run up back up the arm um, yeah there's there's a lot to like about how rotor tilt have gone about this and they can um, but a lot of the manufacturers have done have done this as well I know for a fact EC oil for example with Encon are uh, have also got really trick ways of of combining um, some of these flows and, and, and getting you know more flow through it by combining different ports and all sorts. Um, anyway, clever system from Rototil. I think it's really, really straightforward. Um, you have got to keep these uh, relatively clean, but they're apparently not as susceptible 
um, to you know a bit of dirt and dust. I think if you were changing attachments relatively regularly, uh, I don't think it'd be a problem. But if you left them, you know they've got a bit of oil on them now, and then it, we were on a dusty site somewhere, lots of dust about. This would obviously attract dust. Um, it, it, it's it, you know they would probably work and they would work fine, but you're going to eventually wear seals and things. Um, to me, uh, you know, it, he said if you're changing your attachments regularly, it's not such an issue. Um, but within parameters, maybe in the winter it's less of an issue than it is in the summer with dust. So, but anyway, don't want, you want to keep them fairly clean. It, you know, wouldn't wouldn't be hard occasionally to get out with a rag and um, and clean them up and make sure these contacts have all got grease and uh, things electrical grease in just to keep the water out. That's the biggest killer of all of that. But these so these central ports aren't aren't working on this. We haven't got them plumbed in, but it is possible to do. Um, anyway, I've thought that's a, a pretty neat solution. What I do like is that there's no like little pins that have to line up or or anything because sometimes these blocks, you know, this one doesn't float or anything. It's it's all fixed position, and to protect it, so to stop you from being able to smash into it with the back end of the quick itch, um, you've got this sort of shape. If you can see on the does it on the bucket as well, but also on you've got these little cutouts here. Um, for how this sits and it's exactly the same um, down here on this end so this notch here has to engage with there's one each side with um, with this bit here and that's what protects this valve system if that if you're hooked on on the end of the pin but not quite seated very nicely then um, you can you could potentially end up with a conflict but that notch stops it so it has to be sitting in there nicely in order for it to all go back and, and, and work nicely so I think that's a pretty nifty solution from Rose Tilt because it is easy with these oil connection blocks on the various systems um, to cause damage like that the only thing you do have to be careful of is you have to think about the weight of your attachment when you take it off because if it swings forward or something it just could come off a bit weird or something so that's the only thing really is kind of understanding where the, where the weight of your of your product is but th these are small things really and, and they're kind of driver more of a driver error really than a design error you just you know so many different attachments so many ways to run these things you just have to understand um, how best to do it but certainly been um, pretty impressed with uh, yeah the road tilt system and I've taken it off a few times now and it's um, yeah goes up connects very very quickly and she's back up and running again um, electrically and hydraulically and you could also of course use one of these ports for auto greasing if you had an auto grease system you could run it through the quick itch and um, and through that up to you you could have oil you can have grease you can have whatever it's all options um, just depends how you have it set up depending on the type of work that you do of course so inside the cab with the rotor tilt uh, this is the old style of rotor tilt joysticks. The new RC system, which all uh, rotor tilts now come with, uh, have the new bespoke rotor tilt joysticks. These are, I think, uh, SFAB, S V A B uh, joysticks, the rotor tilt branding. Um, good joysticks, actually, and a lot of manufacturers use these uh, as an early solution. Some still do. Um, don't let them tell you otherwise, you can still spec some of these joysticks with some of these systems. Certainly in Scandinavia, a lot of the operators really like these. They're quite a short joystick. They haven't got too much weight up here, which is, which is quite nice actually. And, and to be honest, they fit your hand nicely. Don't have a wrist rest. Some people like those, some people don't, up to you. Um, these don't have that, but they do have um, two rollers on the top, which actually this one's the main one I find you use. And it works, it works really, really well. Um, you know, it's well within your, your thumb line this one's a little bit of a reach but you'd use that for like secondary third function something like that um, two buttons on the top you've also got buttons and joysticks on the back so you've got one for your little pinky finger here you've got a roller down here and then you've got two more buttons here so plenty of options if you wanted to have let's say track steer um, or where you can convert your pedals to your your levers or anything um, there's lots of configurations you could do with these they're a fairly generic joystick actually this fab system um, that can control all sorts of functions not necessarily just tilt rotators so um, yeah I like these it'd be interesting to see what the new joysticks are like from rotor tilt um, they've kind of been inspired a little bit, I think, by the, 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 the DC2 system from Encon, uh, which is no bad thing either. Uh, so 
really it's sort of what you like you can always adjust them you know the twist or, or where they sit for you um, to get comfortable they're all all fairly similar with that little spanner underneath here so uh, yeah these these are good and I'm sure the new RC ones are, are nice too but haven't tried them so difficult to comment um, up here you've got the screen which currently says the shut off leaves open because to play with the joysticks um, I had that set like that so um, this is your screen and really what this gives you is lots of functionality and, and settings and things that you can play with to adjust that so um, this setting here it, it sort of when you when it comes on this is also how your quick itch works which I'll explain in a minute um, but we get in the the first menu sort of tells you how many degrees your bucket is rotated etc it, it's got a more of a gyroscope in it than an actual sort of sensor um, so it's pretty accurate but like if it came to putting GPS or something on it like that uh, rotor tilt don't they don't fit their uh, their own sort of tilt sensors but it does give you um, an idea of where you are on here obviously if it's calibrated correctly um, and you've also got a couple of options here now one of the fun things with this road to tilt uh, which has been a bit of a laugh is the pulse function so I'll just explain that um, if you had some material in the bucket maybe a, a little bit of you know gravel something like that um, and you were looking to shake it out uh, maybe onto a, a pipe trench line or a bit of curb mix, you know, and you're, you're shaking it out down a line, which obviously I'm not doing here, but uh, you know, it can be done. Uh, what you can do is uh, hold a button down and uh, it'll, which one is it? Is it that one? There we go. It, get the whole thing shaking, which is a little bit mad. It's absolutely crazy. I uh, watch the cab rattle and things in this, you could almost shake the machine to bits, but what it's actually doing is, is vibrating those tilt sensors left to right and it'll shake anything out of the bucket. Um, quite a fun feature. You can set how hard it does it as well. So you can actually change like how aggressive the pulse is. Um, you can have it a little bit less aggressive, more aggressive even, but yeah, uh, that's a bit of a fun feature I've not seen before at any one other manufacturers. Uh, and I can see some uses for it. So that's quite cool. Um, you've also, because it's got this gyroscope in it that kind of knows where it's at, um, you can also do this saved position thing. So if you have your uh, tilt rotator set, let's say, you know, up at a, a weird angle like this and, and your bucket's round, but you're working on a, on a slope maybe and you're trying to grade at a consistent grade, um, you can actually hold, hold the button down and I'm literally just using one finger to do that and it'll, it'll get it back to your safe position, which for me is pretty much straight. Um, I just use the button on the on the back of the joystick here to do that. So now I could put it in any. I could just use the rotate. I'm just using my finger on that, nothing else, and it sets it, which is quite cool, isn't it? Because if you were doing a lot of work on a on a bank or something, um, you know, you can be maybe unloading, swing yourself round, and it'll get you back to pretty much where it should be. Now, because it's a gyroscope, again, it's not exactly the right position every time in, to, in terms of like you know millimeter accuracy but it's pretty much there for for grading and, and again I can see that being quite a useful function so that's quite a cool little feature um, all in built in uh, to this the new screen by the way from from Rotor Tilt is way better uh, much a little bit bigger um, and, and just a lot more sort of easier to see and, and use H having said that in an eight ton machine you have to say or even a smaller machine you know, you've got the screen now with the standard digger, um, you might have extra cameras, you've got this screen to deal with, you might have a GPS or a 2D system screen. There's becoming not a lot of room in a machine cab for a lot of this. So, Road to Tilt have gone with the screen. I have to say, if you're jumping on and off machines all the time, you're an operator to it, you can get used to this very easily. You don't have to connect your phone to it or anything like that. You can jump in. You can switch your rollers about, which I did actually with this one down here. You can change what all the buttons do on your rollers, um, you know, switch them round. It, it, I had my rotation, the, I think it was the tilt actually, it was the wrong way around. Anyway, I swapped that over. Um, you can change user profiles in it. Um, there's warnings, there's speed adjustments. You can have like the general speed and then you can sort of go in further into that and then see what the, like if you just want to adjust the rotator or the tilt or whichever you want. So it's really quite good for, um, yeah, for, for, for easy, quick adjustment without playing with it. I think that's just screen brightness, which is fair enough. 
Um, that gets Netflix up, which is obviously very useful. It's actually languages. Um, yeah, so you know you can you can quite quickly change a lot of these. A lot, some of them, you know, that the information and stuff isn't really any use to you as an operator, but helps with diagnostics and things, um, any troubleshooting alarms, etc. And then you've got quite a few settings that you can play with. Um, that's to change your different profiles and things. And you can obviously go deeper into it if you own the machine. They can give you like an unlock code, and you can go even deeper into stuff and and change about. But I think 90%, 95% of things you'd ever want to change is easily doable within this screen. So fair play to Rotor Tilt, it's quite a good solution. You know, it, 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 you don't need any other technology with you. It's in the machine and you can play about pretty much everything you need to um, with your tilt rotator. So that's as far as sort of in-cab things go, really. There's no other obvious computer hidden anywhere. Um, it is all, all integrated um, into the machine and you've just got this screen in the cab, which is, uh, which is a nice little, little touch. And you can adjust this, it's on just RAM mounts and it can be moved about, etc. Um, but as I say, with increasing amounts of screens in cabs, it is going to be harder and harder to fit stuff like this in, in smaller machines, but you've obviously got a lot more room in a, in a bigger one. Um, the last thing I mentioned on here is this also is how it's part of the safety system to operating your quick hitch. So we all know buckets have fallen off before and killed people. Uh, yeah, pretty shocking um, if they don't latch properly. And uh, another maybe problem that people see with, with machines and tilt rotators, in particular the S-type coupler, is, well, you know, is it dual lock? Because it doesn't have that, that clamp that comes down over, over the front pin there. Well, different manufacturers seem to be going about this a different way but it is it is a uh, uh, compliant I'm told with all of the UK safety legislation for quick hitches and the way it does that is quite clever so and it does integrate this screen so to change the bucket the good thing here is that you can take the bucket off in any position you want by the way which if you've got forks on and they're sometimes an awkward thing and you want to put them upside down or stash them in a trailer sometimes or however or you've got an attachment that's weighted strangely you can take it off in any position it doesn't need to be touching the ground which is which I think is good some of the manufacturers now you have to you know put a bit of pressure down on the ground to, to get the the quick hitch to release none of that with this it will come off in any position it does of course mean you have to be a little bit wary of how you are positioned when you do it but it goes through a process that's not too complicated uh, in order to do that. So we want to change our bucket. Firstly, you've got to press this little green button here. You've got a little padlock to unlock. And that will say, right, you know, your switch is activated. Now that's relating to this little road to switch down here, which is on my left hand side. Flick that and the bucket will, the, the, the rams have now come back and pulled itself back. So that bucket is now it's now clear, you can hear it knocking about on there and I can take the bucket off as required. I am doing this one-handed by the way, not the easiest. Um, and you can see all the, the RAM in there and everything. If I then go to close that, so I then flick that rocker back, that will close that hitch um, and she's, she's closed. However, because I haven't got a bucket on there, those little pins and everything that locks that bucket in um, is now beyond its parameters so it's beyond beyond its it's you know where the pin would normally sit and it knows that so it's telling me here just knock the radio on with my elbow the classic Kubota issue that one um, it's now telling me that the tool is not properly attached so if you did have any mud in the front jaw or something that that hitch has to sit within a certain parameter and if it doesn't it's very finely tuned um, it'll tell you so any mud on the pins like I have a bit actually here it'd be interesting to see when this goes back on whether it does it um, or anything will tell you whether or not that tool is on and that's what gives it the second kind of locking because it, it won't you know it'll keep telling you and shouting at you saying your tools not properly attached so we can press OK and override this in this instance because I've decided, so I'm okay with it, uh, I've got to press green and okay. So I can't just press okay, I've got to press green and okay to, to shut it up. So uh, I've maybe gone the wrong way there. So in, in order to, to do it, because it, it basically it's, it's telling me you've, you, your coupler's not right, 
but you know it's not right, so you have to press two buttons. It makes a lot of sense. I've probably made it a lot harder on the video than I needed to. And it's constantly got this warning here that the wedge is in is um, past its position because it's open. But maybe I want to use the gripper. Um, I've got much better visibility like this, so that would be a situation where I would have the bucket off, or maybe I'm lifting something and I want the bucket in the way. Um, that's the reason why. You can also do it with the top coupler and it'll do exactly the same. So if you take the tilt rotator off and you're just doing some lifting and you don't want the weight on there, um, it'll do all of this and again tell you through here. After a minute it comes back up on the screen that the tool is not properly attached. Um, just to remind you that if you did have a bucket on the thing's not right. So that's how that works. Either way, really easy to do. We want to um, unattach it again. So unlock on there find a little switch and you'll see the flaps open on the uh, quick change system that's ready obviously if it did have a tool on it would it would then connect all that up hydraulically um, we can then put this back on which again is is hard work one-handed I'm using my elbow here apologies for poor driving to get this bucket lined back up so I've got that back on now, I think that's on there. I'm then just gonna turn this off here. That'll connect that up, and there you go. We've got coupler lock activated, and we're all good. So, that's basically the quick hitch. Works really, really easily. I'm just making it look harder because I'm trying to explain at the same time. But it's very, very quick to change tools, and even hydraulically, it just takes as long as it takes to change a bucket to change a hydraulic attachment as well with this with this quick change system. So that's everything really from inside the cab uh, that you need to know about the rotor tilt. Um, it, it, and yeah. It, it drives lovely on the end of this Kubota, uh, as I'll uh, explain in another video, uh, and then we'll uh, have a final thoughts on what we think of the rotor tilt versus other manufacturers in this weight class. So I guess really it's come to conclusions time. Uh, how have I found this rotor tilt uh, overall, and and would I potentially get one? Um, I've found it really really straightforward to use. It, the control screen is, is really intuitive, it's quite easy even as somebody jumping on this machine and kind of going, ah, oh, the controls are the wrong way around. It's pretty straightforward to work that out on your own um, of how to go about changing them. So that's nice and I'm told that the new screen is, uh, is another step up even better. So um, be nice to try that one day in the future. Uh, I, I like the Rotor Tilt product. I think the advantage, the main advantage sort of for me in my, uh, the way I would have it maybe on my machine would be the fact that you can run a breaker. Uh, I think that's a, a great um, little, little sort of advantage. Uh, and for someone who uses a, a breaker occasionally, um, that's a, you know, a perfect way to maybe save a bit of weight, save a bit of money even, um, not necessarily running a top hitch. Uh, which also reduces build height. There's a lot of advantages to that. So it gives you options and that's sort of the main advantage for me. But on an eight ton machine where really they're kind of, you know, they can handle the top hitch, they can handle the, the, the bigger unit and, and the weight of it, uh, not so much of an issue. Uh, I've found this unit to be really quite nice to use. Um, obviously different machines will power them slightly differently, won't they? Uh, but this Kubota has by no means uh, had any issues powering it. And in fact, it's been a really smooth unit to use as you would expect. And I think a lot of that comes down to how it's set up initially. That is a key thing. I've seen, I've seen nice units, you know, I've driven a few tilt rotator setups now, and sometimes even, you know, the same unit on a different machine drives completely differently. And I don't think it should necessarily be like that. And it shouldn't be. Uh, you can set things up how you want them uh, and how the machine powers it maybe slightly differently, but you should still be able to get a good usable flow sharing setup out of that. Um, Rotor Tilt's certainly done that with this machine. And yeah, it's driven, it's driven lovely. In fact, uh, yeah, I can, um, as someone who runs a tilt rotator on a smaller machine, I can completely see how one on these kind of eight ton sizes is an absolute beast. Um, combined with a few attachments, you can do an awful lot of work with one of these um, and probably allows you to do work of a slightly smaller machine sometimes because you can kind of get into awkward places with the machine by adjusting that bucket. Um, and yeah, as a uh, you know, with the gripper and the different tools you can run, it's, uh, 
it's almost like having another man on the ground really which uh, in the day and age of a skill shortage and finding good people uh, is no doubt a bonus um, but that's something that would be the same of course for any kind of tilt rotator you put on the end of this so what's the rotor tilt real difference um, i think they've got i've got a pretty good dealer network i certainly would have been happy enough um, with with the service I, I think I would have got from them. Um, I know a couple of people in my area with rotor tilts um, and they don't have any issues and they, they get on well. It's a very well built unit. Um, some would say slightly less finesse maybe than a couple of the others, um, but uh, it's by no means agricultural in the way that it's built. Uh, I think it's just a kind of, you know, we wanted a gusset and, you know, we've put a gusset in there kind of thing. And it gives you confidence that things are going to take some, uh, some abuse and, and a bit of a beating over time, which no doubt, you know, it would. And they do in Scandinavia, let's not forget. They dig a lot of rock out there. Um, the tilt cylinders on this, something I didn't mention um, when I was walking around it, they don't quite go, they don't go to 45 degrees. I think they only do 40 degrees in the tilt. Uh, might be a bit of a thing for you, but actually I've found it not to be an issue because you can rotate that bucket to get the extra angle if you really needed it. I think 45 degrees is a bit of a, it's become a bit of an industry standard and I'm not sure a lot of us really grade at 45 degrees, do we, to something? So um, I haven't found it limiting in that way, but it is a difference because uh, certainly some of the other um, you know, units in this class will tilt that little bit further. So trying to find dif differences here really they're all very good aren't they um and yeah they've all got their own way of doing the hydraulic quick changing um they've all got their own little design quirks and control features and things um but yeah i've been i've been pretty impressed with this uh with this rotor tilt it's driven lovely uh i think it's i think it's well built the, the install which is of course key uh is a very nice one so yeah and the, and the machine has powered it well uh, be that the machine or of course the installer as well so uh, yeah I, I always it's always on my list road to tilt to compare and I was very very close to buying one with my 8026 um, didn't quite get there on the deal sadly deal came in a little bit late I've got very very good backup with um, Neil and Nasco from and Encon uh, and the unit the ECO2 unit is just that little bit lighter than the R1 with a top hitch and whilst I could have direct mounted the R1 from Rototill, uh, I, I, I still prefer having a top hitch. Having broken my unit a couple of times, um, the ability to drop it off, use a bucket, um, or obviously I take it off for my breaker, I take it off for my auger. It doesn't come off a lot of times a year, but it is a handy kind of backup to be able to, to just drop it off if I need to, um, to you know, either lift, maybe lift something a little bit heavier, you know, you take 80 kilos off the arm on a 2.8 ton digger, it, it does help uh, with whatever you're doing. So I decided to go down that route and Rotor Tilt have got their own top hitches at this level, at the eight ton level, um, but still down on the S30 side, they haven't got their own hitch yet and they will supply a hitch and it's a good quality hitch as well from Hurricane Attachments, somebody I've got a bucket from in fact. But at this size here, uh, and the eight ton class, yeah, it's, um, it's a very, very competitive unit. And I would say um, you've got to consider one if you're in the market for uh, an eight ton machine. I don't think you'd be disappointed with any of the main manufacturers. Really comes down to price, um, backup, and uh, you know, availability as well has been an issue, maybe less so these days. Um, yeah, one thing I think Rototil are doing, of course, still is direct mounting which I know some of the other manufacturers are going away from a little bit. Uh, and I think that's a shame because uh, it does give people options depending on the work they do. Um, but you can spec these rotor tilts in pretty much all the, all the ways that you would want, four pipe, six pipe, you know, control system as this one is here. Um, they do still do all of the options, which again, might be a deciding factor for you. So um, that's my thoughts anyway on the rotor tilt. I've banged on enough uh, about a tilt rotator long enough in this video so uh, anyway I hope you enjoyed that uh, please subscribe to my channel I try and do these reviews in-depth reviews of this kit that I get to drive and get these opportunities uh, great for Rototil and Kubota for supplying this machine for the last two weeks to have uh, play with it's been an absolute joy um, and uh, I will try and catch you in the next video thank you very much